Yes. Can you talk a little bit about your experience working with some of those vocalists like Christian Aguilera and Fergie and Blessed Absolutely. So Fergie, let me go back. Fergie was in a group called Wild Orchid, right? And while before they were signed, they used to come to my uh, office when I did a and r And what happened was, I was like, man, you know, and Fergie and them, they used to come in and say, hey, Ron, you know, we're going to sing the national anthem for you because we're singing it at Dodger Stadium. I was like, okay. You know, I was like, eh, it's, it's, it's all right. You know what I mean? I was like, it needs a little something else on it, right? So I introduced them to a writer that I had found out of Kansas City, another Under the Rock, right? They wrote like five songs together, Wild Orchid got signed, whatever. You know, uh, after that record didn't happen, then when Fergie was out on her own, Fergie is a beast, man. Let me, let me tell you, she's like, I mean, man, she can sing it, and you'll think that she's like, oh my gosh, hey, hey, baby. But then she'll say, you know what? Can you take take 23? Go back to take one, cut that word out, put that there. So she knew where those vocals were. Just, I mean, a beast about it. There are some vocalists who don't even want to be in the studio when you comp their vocals. Why? I don't understand it, but I would be there. Christina Aguilera, that situation happened. Um, I mean, that was a weird one. But when Ron told me, he says, hey, man, listen. I got this girl, I want you to produce her, da 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 Britney Spears was out. All I kept thinking was, oh my God, another Britney Spears, you gotta be kidding, because she had no records out, I didn't know who she was. And I'm just like, oh, okay, send her to me, all right? So I had her booked for three days. That's, that's the way it works. I'm like, okay, well, we gotta cut background vocals. We gotta cut leads. And then if I have any follow-ups, I need another day, you know, to, to cut the vocals. And these aren't all day sessions, you know, they're like roughly six hours, you know, that's usually the max, because you can't even push a vocal, especially a lead vocal more than two hours. So she came out to me, little girl, weighing about 93 pounds. And I hadn't heard her sing before. And so I said, well, you know what? I said, you know the song? And she goes, yeah, I know it. I'm like, all right. I said, well, let's go into the vocal studio and let's see what you got. So as a producer, you are always in record. As an engineer, you are always in record. You never say stop until the singer stops. Never, ever, ever, never, ever, because they could give you that thing, you know what I mean? And you can't get it back. So I said, well, look, let's just go get a warm-up, run through the song for me, and let me hear where you're at. And back at this time, we were recording, uh, I was recording um, on something called ADATS, right? And that was like the first digital eight tracks that were out, but I had like four of them, right? She goes in that vocal booth, right? And I'm like, all right, you know, <laughs> Okay, let's just take a take. And all I'm thinking is, they sending me this dang on, like, girl who can't sing another Mickey Mouse club. <laughs> girl, I'm like, ah, you know, because I still hadn't heard her sing, right? I put it in record because that's the mechanism, right? That's, that's what you do. And I did a song called, this was a song called So Emotional on the Genie in the Bottle record. So it starts going, and I'm just sitting there at the board, like, mm, mm, mm. So she starts singing, right? <laughs> My jaws are like, all right. And she sings the whole song, because I'm not, I'm not stopping until she stops, right? She is killing the whole, I mean, just killing, like, I'm just sitting there going, oh my God, oh my God. So the song stops, I go over to my vocal booth, boom, kick the door open, I stand, I go. And she's like, what? I'm like, what do you mean, what? I was like, she's like, what? I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? I'm like, I didn't know you could sing like that. And she goes, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, oh my God, right? And in my mind, I'm like, oh man, this just got real, right? Okay, now all my producing chops, right? So here's the cool thing. I didn't have to do anything. Because all those years of bad singers of recording and playing and all of the cheap equipment, working my way up, working with those singers, 
It was all right there, right now. It was great. So then I go, well, wait a minute. So what we had to do, it's, it's unfortunate because on that record, the very first verse is the first time I heard her sing. The, the very first verse. The second verse, I had smoking, but it was a little too R&B. So I had to, you know, record company's like, well, she's not that kind of singer. I was like, are you kidding me? Right? And so we had to go clean that up. We cut the background vocals, everything in one day. So I had her for two more days. We would just go hang out at Wendy's because <laughs> she loved Wendy's, right? And, and she loved Sugar Ray, and she would talk about guys. And it was great. And I would give her, like, I gave her, uh, she, wanted, she was tired when we had to do the bridge, so I gave her some coffee with hazelnut creamer in it, right? So imagine, she's 90 pounds, right? She was buzzing off the wall, right? She's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was like, hey, hey, slow, you know, slow down. And it was such a crazy experience that she even put that on her album in the notes. She goes, Ron, thank you for the crazy coffee episode, right? Which is really, really cool. But one of the things that I will tell you singers, while I was comping the vocal, and before she had to go do ad-libs, she was only listening to Mariah Carey and Brandy. So while I go, hold on a second, let me put this vocal together before you sing the bridge or whatever, she would put her Walkman on, and she would just be sitting there like this, working on her riffs. That's all she would do. So then I'd be like, okay, let's go. So she was in gear. You see what I'm saying? She was doing what it was taking. It was like her theme songs to get her vocal, you know, thing on. And that's how she would hit it and attack it. So, any other questions? 